future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. We have to teach them well, right? We have to, we cannot afford to assume that someone else is teaching them. Hi, my name is Aaron Ramsey. I'm the YMCA Y Scholars and Junior Leaders Counselor. My job here is to help students uh, get better as far as improving their daily skills and improving them on learning new tools and also helping them in high school now readiness and college now readiness and as far as you know lifestyle tools that they can utilize um, in the future. My passion I have for doing this is I feel like it gives me a, a more drive and my passion is to elevate and enlighten um, our students and you know with me that kind of makes me feel better because as long as if I as long as I can get one I teach one I can mold one and help one I feel like I pursue my passion as far as laying one we cannot afford to assume that someone else is exposing them we have to let them know and we have to be authentic in letting them know right because some of our children are born into certain circumstances and they don't know that they can make it. Hello, my name is Jediah Murray. I'm a counselor here at the YMCA for IS59. I've been a counselor here for about going on three years and I can happily say I've enjoyed every moment of it. It's really sentimental and really rewarding working with uh, the, the kids and it's it's been fun. I'm not gonna say it's been perfect, but it's been fun and enjoyable the entire time. And uh, one of my favorite things about it is building the personal connections with the children. Um, I like when they come to me for advice. I've given alumni advice and they've come back and said, oh, it re it's really true what you said. I didn't really see it then, but I can see it now. It's, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's a big part, but there's something else I did that I, I was told I do, and it, it happened subconsciously where I, for backstory, I didn't have the best time in middle school. I had transferred to a new school with kids that had connections from kindergarten all the way up to seventh grade. And when I transferred there, I was a new kid. I didn't know anybody. And it, it wasn't welcoming at all per se, it really wasn't welcoming. And I felt isolated and I it wasn't a good feeling like at all, being kicked to the side. So I was told everything happens for a reason and it was great that I ended up working back in the school because one of the things I do is make sure everybody's included. And I didn't realize I did that. I just thought I did it because, you know, I feel I always felt like every kid should be included. I didn't realize it was a kind of a full circle story telling thing, but it 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 helps, you know, knowing that I make sure everybody's having fun and feeling included and nobody's left out. Like if I see somebody sitting by themselves, I definitely go out and talk to them. Or if I see somebody's having not the best of days, I definitely reach out to them. So, yeah, that's uh, probably my favorite part of the job. It's fun. And they don't know that they have the same opportunities. And they don't know that all it takes is intrinsic motivation, right? And um, it takes a village. It t that's not cliche. I'm Joshua Brown. I am, I like to think, I like to draw and be creative. Um, I'm a counselor here at the YMCA, and I supervise the children as well as encourage them um, to see what's good in themselves and in others and to uh, treat, treat each other with love and respect. That one little thing you say to a child, they might not ever forget. So guys, this letter is going out to your parents, but I thought it'd be really nice for you all to read. Jamila, why don't you read yours out loud? To the parents of Jamil Kamose, as the program director of YMCA's after school program at IS59, IS59, I am pleased to tell you that your scholar has shown exemplary leadership skills. Jamila has been chosen to choose our new 
docu-series titled Why Not as a journalist and interviewer in our first documentary. To the parents of Preston Christian, as the program director of the YMCA's after school program at IS59, I am pleased to tell you that your scholar has shown exemplary leadership skills. Preston has been chosen to represent our new docu-series titled Why Not as the host in our first documentary. The series Why Not is a documentary series followed our IAS 59 scholars as they prep and prepare to interview the, spe the guest speaker of this the month. Preston will facilitate and host our first speaker, William Billy Council, on November 4th, 2022. The event will be held in the auditorium at 4 p.m. I invite you to come and support your scholar this day. Sincerely, Crystal Hyman. Janina, how do you feel? I called you an exemplary student. Um, I feel inspired, and, but it's really scary. It is scary, but I believe you got this. You were chosen for a reason. You've done a lot of research. One of the reasons you were chosen is because of the questions. You, you understood the assignment completely. Not only did you jot down things that stood out to you from the film, but then you went above and started writing down questions the first time of um, what you could ask, and that Thank was impressive. You. You're welcome, you're welcome. You got this, I'm excited for you. Jaden, I called you exemplary. What does that mean to you? I feel really proud of myself, especially because I was chosen for the first Why Not Documented series. Nice. You think you're up for the challenge? Maybe. <laughs> I think you're up for the challenge. You were so um, committed into that film, and I know that there was a lot of chit-chat because some people weren't as invested as you were, um, which is one of the reasons you were chosen. So thank you. I think you're going to knock this out the park. Thank you. You're welcome. Kamari, I called you exemplary. Like, what, do you, what does that mean to you? I feel chosen. I feel like the chosen one. Um, I... This uh, enhances my confidence to do other things in my future life. When you give this paper to your parents, how do you think they're going to feel? Very proud of me and happy uh, because um, I've, I've done a lot of things, but this is the most I've ever done. I've been in a lot of things. Nice. I want to just tell you, since I told every, almost everyone else, is when we watch the doc, of Little Ballers, you two were so invested, you wrote actually the most questions out of everyone. I looked at and read everyone's paper and you almost had a page and a half of questions to ask Coach Billy. So I'm really excited that you're going to get a chance to interview him. You got this. Thank you. <laughs> you can smile. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I said in this letter the truth, which is you showed exemplary leadership skills, the same as the rest of your peers. But I want to know what that means to you. Um, what this means to me is very much a pleasure to me that you realized how much of a leader I am. And like Kamari said, it's very honored to me because I get to be the host of the first ever documentary why not series so i feel like this could really go down in history for me yeah i love that do you know why i picked you as a host because okay. i'm that guy I'm <laughs> i got the personality um your personality I, is huge but it is also jovial which is like very happy you bring people to you you make people smile um and you're funny. Oh my gosh. You are very funny. I think that you are meant to be on stage personally, but that's a choice career for you to pick on your own. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, you know, when I'm an old head. Oh, don't be too so old. It's okay. <laughs> you got this. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I know you guys are going to knock this out of the park. Got it. Yeah. Um, on three... Let's yell out Why Not Series. Ready? One, two, three. Why, Why not, not Series? You guys got this. Everybody wants to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know.
black church is definitely bigger than this. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. My name is Preston Christian. I will be the host for your Why Not series. I'm 13 years old. I'm in the eighth grade. One interesting fact about me. Ladies Magnet, ladies, hit me up, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I'm very excited to say I'm very happy for you guys to meet today's guest tonight. And so am I. Billy Council. Ask him, I'd probably ask him about three, two questions I have that has to do with his, um, the NBA player he coached to really know how, what it was like for him, how our life was, how he, what he taught him, what he didn't teach him, so I can know. A second question would probably be, probably is he still in contact with him? As a coach, how do you motivate your players to keep them going on and off the court? You know, I just, one of the things that I, you know, I think I, I have done a great job of just doing is becoming an avid listener to my players, right? Because a lot of times, as a, you know, as adults, we just say what y'all need to do. And I think for me, I've developed this relationship with so many of my players by being them and putting myself in their shoes and developing that relationship and that bond that I still have a lot of them today, you know, whether they're in the NBA or they play on the or, you know, they're doing productive things in life and some of them coaching. It's like those relationships still stands, right? Because they believe in me and I believe in them. So that was one of the, you know, one of the great things that I was able to uh, do with them. I would ask him how he supports his daughter and what she wants to do. I wonder what his sneaker game is like. I wonder if he got that drip, or if he got, he just, he just an old head. I wonder if he got that old head shot. Yeah. I, I want him to be one of all of us in King of the Court. Oh, he he, I'll he be, be No, he, he shoot like unique, he probably. I'll be all y'all. Yeah, okay. Okay. I feel special. I feel, I feel great. I feel like this name right here, and that means something to me. I feel special. So you're not nervous in any way about being interviewed? A little bit. A little, I'm a little under pressure, but I've been under more. Nice. What's one of the things that resonated with you about Coach Billy? Something that stood out that really touched you? When he had got shot six times on the stairwell. Um, that's something very personal, and it's crazy how he shared that with the world. What's one question you really want to ask him? How did he feel when that happened to him? Did he feel like he was going to die? Did he feel like it was, that was it? That was how he goes away? What, what was the biggest thing that uh, he was going to feel like was going away from him in that moment? How do you forgive the person that shot you and if so have had it for you? How did you get to the point in your life to forgive that person? You know, uh, to be honest with you guys, I probably just forgave him probably five years ago. Right, so I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys all these stories about how you forgive me for yourself and all that stuff. I'm gonna be as honest as I possibly can. And it took me a long time to forgive him, right? And even though he was in, he's, he's in jail, um, but it took me a long, long, long time to forgive him. And I didn't forgive him for myself. Like when people say, oh, I have to forgive him for myself. I forgave him for him, right? Because there was something inside of him that needed to be dealt with and be, and be addressed. And I was hoping that he gets that healing before I could find him. Does that make sense? Well, that was 
shoulders up and then just let them sink. Oh. Now roll your head around. Now you just move your arms around. Make it with it, yeah. Yeah. Jaden's a dancer on the low. You saw how those shoulders started moving? <laughs> especially and uh, really it's just kind of yeah basically just a lot of responsibility how you think you're doing so far i think i'm doing fine i'm a little nervous but i'm fine that's okay you're doing great you're doing more than fine what has the process been like um researching him because you guys have you watched the documentary then you did some online research about him how has that process been trying to find everything you can about somebody else's life? Um, really, after the documentary, I went home and, you know, just search, search him up on Google and trying to click on every link and figure out the most I can about him. So, so during this process, you, you kind of getting to know or getting the feel of what maybe journalists don't know about him. Yeah. Is that what you're trying to kind of study? study that person and then ask them or they could even write about them when they after they study. Mm -hmm. yeah. How has that process been? Like really trying to study somebody and figure out as much as you can about them. Do you feel like on Friday you pretty much know who this man is? Yeah, I kind of feel like an investigator kind of because you know some people they just like like investigators they like go into things, they dig deeper into stuff to figure out more information, and that's how I'm feeling right now. I'm excited. Are you excited for Friday? Yeah. Or are you gonna feel like I can't wait to see you on Friday? Probably, but I'm still excited. Um, are your parents coming? Do you know? Is anyone uh, able to come? Because I know everyone works. I don't know, because my mom works. So. Mm -hmm. Is there one thing that um, I really want to ask him how he manages to like help his players become even better than they are than they were when he first met them. How he kind of builds them up on the court and off the court. That's actually a really good question. Do we, do we have that one written down? Was that one of your questions that you wrote down? I think part of it was. I remember that question. It's a perfect question. Right. That's a really good one. How do you think he's going to be? Like, I could just imagine the anticipation of researching someone that you really don't know, then seeing a doc, and then looking at all of his, um, all of his interviews online, and then I would imagine that you have a certain perception about him. Can you share a little bit what that is? I feel if like, I feel like um, he would be kind of, a really like understanding person but he might not really like show it because coaches they they some of them are aggressive but they 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 usually just want to push their players to show highest potential so do you think he's an aggressive coach probably yeah i think so too from what you're saying anything else that you think you might want to learn from this man or you might want to I want to learn like how to keep my head keep my head up, how to keep focusing on what I want to do in life, and how I can become a better basketball player. That's why we chose you. Thank you. You said that you and the players became family, but what happens when communication falls apart? As a coach, how do you get everyone back together? 
Well, I mean, that's one of the great things about humanity, right? Is things fall apart. The, the, the good thing about falling apart is you can put it back together, right? So it's just like everyone that's sitting in here, right? You know, you may do something early on in the year, but you get an opportunity to redeem yourself, right? And communication breaks down all the time, right? You know, especially with coaches and, and, and parents, because sometimes we believe that we know it all, right? And we don't give young people the opportunity to speak. So that's what communication breaks down. But one of the things that I was always able to do, I was always able to show them the telephone game. How easy, and I think if you guys watched the film, you guys saw that when I would say something to you, by the time it got to you, it was something totally different. So I showed them where the breakdown occurs at, and how do we fix the breakdown? We just repair it, right? Put it back together, and we start it all over. Hello, my name is Deanna, AKA Miss D, and I am the counselor and also the dance instructor at the YMCA at 59's branch. And what do I love about this job is that the kids teach me something new every day. Um, personality wise or even academically wise, they teach me something new every day and it keeps me keeps me young and it keeps me entertained. First, so we all understand? Yeah. One, two. The YMCA, some things about the YMCA is you should really come here. Some people not, might not like it because after school they want to go hang out with their friends. But it's not really mandatory to come every day. It's not like some after school programs where they might put it as if you miss three days then you're out. They don't really worry about that. We get to go to the gym. There's many programs. It's kind of like the YMCA's that they have around the swimming pools and stuff but there's no big academy, no swimming pools, but you still get to go to the gym most of the week. You get to do theater. You have staff members that are cool and not some old grouchy people. And how the YMCA changed my life. Uh, it changed my life because I, get to, I got new friends. I get to hang out with more people. People that I didn't even really know was in this school because you don't get to really see everybody here. And it really helps me with my homework. So when I'm home, I could really just relax and lay down. And I have people, many people that I know here that I've been new since seventh grade, maybe. So yeah. Hi, my name is Ivy Ambansu, but everybody calls me Ivy. I'm the STEM specialist here at IF59, and I'm our publicist for our Why Not docuseries. I like working with the kids because every day is something new with them and they keep me energized. They, since working here, the kids help me with my social anxiety. Since there's so many of them, I'm talking to so many students and it just helps me be more social in my day-to-day -day life. And I just want any of the participants just not to deal with some of the problems I've dealt with, with just worrying about what other people are thinking of them or not feeling comfortable to say something because here, Everybody is like a friend or family, so I just want everybody to be comfortable. So I just, this is why I like working here. I just love working with the kids. How would you describe your relationship with your family back then and now? Well, back, back then growing up, you know, I, 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 I grew up kind of harsh. You know, um, my mom had a substance abuse um, sickness, right? So it was it was tough, right? And then being the only boy to um, sisters, I had to sometimes at, at, at times have to be like the man of the house. Um, and even though I was young, you know, taking on that responsibility was kind of tough. 
So Jamila, how do you feel about being chosen to interview Mr. Council? I feel really inspired and I feel that um, I was chosen for a reason. Um, being the circumstances, I learned a lot um, through the process, but the most thing I've learned is to like be yourself and stay positive and those are some things that he does to other people and I feel like this would like set me and like help me and motivate myself and that um, it's just gonna make me feel better. I love that. So okay, so it seems like you've done some research on him, right? What kind of research have you done? I've learned what kind of productions he's, he's done, the um, foundations he's been with, um, a bunch of things about him, some stuff about how he, when he was younger, and a lot about his social life. What about his social life? Um, I've learned that he's like really up there with like Instagram and stuff like that. He posts he posts a lot about his foundations and different programs that he's in. Nice. Um, is there one thing about him that inspires you the most? That he, no matter what, he still pushed himself to be the best he could. Nice. What's one question you want to ask him? I want to ask him how his childhood was and what setbacks he had and stuff like what made him feel down about himself, the people that he needed to be there to make him feel better, and why he picked this career to be the one that he wanted to start off with. Are you nervous about it? Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. I remember when I, I was out uh, with some friends at a party and we were talking about life, you know, and I remember the night when I was leaving the my home, I sat in my grandmother house and she said to me, she said, boy, you better do something with your life, right? And I was like, I am doing something with my life. I'm not actually going to a party right now. And she was just like, no, you need to do something with your life that's impactful. And the only thing that I can think about when I walked outside is how can I direct young people from not going down a path that I went through and how can I be a vessel for them? So that's when I started saying to myself, let me do something that I love, that I can help. And when I thought that I was saving so many of these young people's lives that I was coaching, but I didn't realize that they were saving me, saving my life and giving me a bigger purpose. Hi, um, my name is Hobbs Parisian. I am a counselor at IS-59 at the YMCA. Um, I'm in charge of multi-sports, uh, kind of just help the youth, you know, kind of like learn what teamwork is, you know, with the sports, the activities that they do, and kind of also implement the reason why or the importance of why teamwork is important for them to learn, because not only in sports, or whatever activities that they gonna need it for, but also in life, because when you're in an environment where you, you know you're employed or doing volunteer work, things like that, you know, team having that teamwork spirit, you know, is gonna help. And it's gonna go a long way. So working along with others is definitely gonna go a long way. So yeah. The royal palm is a symbolic representation of Haiti's political independence. Hello, my name is Lashana Aline and I am the art counselor for the YMCA. I actually chose this job because of one, having a passion for arts and crafts and because I really wanted to just guide the kids down a positive road. Being older and going through what I went through as a child, I wouldn't really want to see kids go down that path as well as to why I told myself this is the job for me. Many people know you as a coach, but we also learned that you are a businessman and community advocate in your hometown of Harlem. Can you tell us what that really means to be a community advocate? So, a community, you know, one of the things that I believe that 
is we all pay a price to live on earth, right? And for me, it's service. Service is the price that I pay to live on this earth. So I fight for those who can't fight for themselves. I fight for those who don't have a voice. I fight for those young people who need someone to talk to. I fight for you guys, whether you guys are in my community or not, to give you guys hope and opportunity. So I'm an avid believer of service. So I have been serving my community um, for a long time. And not just Harlem, it's just like New York City, right? Because I'm still doing service for programs and stuff like that in New York. So I, you know, I just want to be able to be a vessel for you, for, for especially young people. For me, I do, those of you that are clapping, thank you. Don't you just clap for Mr. Council, but please clap for your peers. but really not because this is a guy I saw on TV and you never really meet people that you see on TV live especially when it gets a lot of views but it wasn't really that bad because he was a good guy he was nice he didn't really put no pressure on us so um, it was fun um, when we got to meet him it was as person said I was kind of nervous in the beginning but then he like opened up and we got to learn a lot of things about him and then we didn't really have time to like really speak to him because right after um, the show started. Yeah. Uh, me, personally, when I had met the council, um, I was nervous at the beginning because I thought like he was this big celebrity, like he was someone famous. He is, but like when I met him, I realized that he was a regular person with the same emotions as us. So I just, um, I toss him like a regular person and I calmed down and yeah. Thank you. This is all we're doing. What in the world is going on here? Now, what you have? Good afternoon, I'm Carol Grace McDugan. I am an education specialist for the YMCA. This is probably my ninth year. And in all of those years, I've had the privilege to work with many, many Y participants. My role here is primarily to ensure that the educational component is embedded in everything we do here at the after school program. This might include reviewing lesson plans, teaching how to write a lesson plan. It might include modeling a lesson um, and talking with the counselors to ensure that what they're um, imparting on our participants has some sort of a educational background while still being fun and enjoyable. The process in making the docu-series um, is, is nothing short of amazing. Um, we get to um, interact with various entrepreneurs and find out, you know, what motivates them, what, you know, led them to arrive where they are today. Um, very often, our participants, our children as it were, 
they're very interested in being a basketball player or they're interested in being a rapper. But when we bring in these various entities and they're able to explain their process and what they went through and how they have evolved into who they are today, our children can begin to see that there are other avenues that not necessarily have to be traditional, like a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, right? Those things are wonderful. I'm also a teacher, 18 years. But they get to see that um, they can expand their minds in ways that they had not thought of previously. Or maybe if they did think of some things previously, they get to see it come to a um, pass or someone has been able to accomplish it. Um, what I'm personally getting from the docu-series is watching the enthusiasm of the children. Um, I, we um, interviewed someone about a week or so ago and the questions that the children asked of, of this person with nothing short of outstanding. The questions were high leverage questions, which allowed me to see that they had put some thought into what they were doing. They were interested in finding out more information and gathering more information. So, um, the other thing is, like, I mean, as you can see, I'm a bit of a ham. I like being on camera. That's an aside. But um, that was, I was just being funny there. But um, doing the docu-series and being able to see it come to fruition and watching the children and interviewing the various people, um, I think it's so important to bring in um, talent and bring in folks that have made it um, in their own right, in their own way, and having them impart this information to our participants.